hey guys what's going on uh it's been a while since i've last made a youtube update video uh i usually post more on instagram tiktok even tiktok i've honestly barely posted but um yeah i'm just gonna start making more videos on my youtube channel to be honest but i was just recently checking my channel I'm like damn it's been like five six months since i've uh kind of made a video on on the channel but um a lot has obviously changed since uh, the last video, I got a new front lip, so I'll start with that. Here it is. It's not the most perfect fit, but... Like, that, this area right here is not the greatest, but from afar, you can't really tell. And from the side, you definitely can't tell. But, um, the reason I got that front lip is, uh... I was driving, I want to say a month or two ago, and I had a splitter before that was like a black splitter that goes underneath the bumper. I had that on the car, and I was driving, and I hit a really bad dip, and pretty much like right here behind the bumper, it kind of, the bumper cracked, and so I basically got the lip to like kind of like hide that, <laughs> but um yeah and like it broke the splitter and it cracked my bumper like this part of the bumper i had my body shop fix that actually and um i think they kind of like stitched it together and the, the front lip just kind of like hides um that that area so that kind of works out getting new front lip at the same time i don't know if i'm gonna keep this front lip permanently or what but um i don't know it's kind of a toss-up between this and the splitter that I had before. We'll see though. So that's why I got that front lip. Do like a nice little side angle here. The next uh, mods obviously I've done since the time I've made uh, a YouTube video was these fenders and the hood, all carbon fiber. They're from Saibon and Fortunately, it's pretty dark out, so it's not, you can't really see the weave, but you can tell it's carbon. And I had a friend that was recently parting out her IS350, and I bought the hood and the fenders actually from her. So I didn't buy them new, but they're they're both in pretty good condition. So it was a no-brainer for me to, to pick those up, because I was already debating on getting them anyways. So come over to the hood here. The hood is actually PPF. You can see the F Sport intake through the vents. The fenders, you can't really tell right now, but um, they're kind of faded. Not entirely faded, but like compared to the hood, it's yeah, it definitely has a more significant uh, sun fade uh, just from being parked outside and stuff like that. But the carbon, the exposed carbon looks really good with the white paint, in my opinion. I know a lot of people don't like the, the carbon fiber with, um, or like they usually paint the carbon fiber or whatnot, or like they don't like exposed carbon fiber uh, with the different colored paint and stuff. But I don't know, I kind of like it. I, I really like it, actually. I have no intentions of painting uh, the, the fenders or the hood or anything like that. People keep telling me uh, you should try it and we're looking to it, but... I have no intentions of doing that, but yeah, that's the hood and the fenders. She gave me a pretty good deal on the fenders, the hood. Uh, actually, though, a pretty good price on the hood as well, since it came PPF. Then you can see she had the um, hood latches installed, which is good. Just an extra safety precaution. But with the hood and the fenders, I kind of feel like uh, this, the front lip that I have right now doesn't look as aggressive as the splitter that I had before. Just kind of want to, want to go back to that. Just another look on this side.
so yeah that's like the more major mods i've done in the last couple of months there's obviously been like little small things here and there that i'll get to in a second recently put on this banner on the windshield club lexus toronto and what else oh yeah uh this past week i actually changed the diffuser so if you guys remember i had the black painted diffuser before and that one had the the brake led light at the the back i took that off just because um this area of that diffuser uh the previous diffuser i had it would never kind of like stick to the bumper that well it would never like You'd always be able to see the 3m tape it was never like flush kind of thing and no matter what you did unless you use like screws to drill it in an area where it's like really obvious you drilled into the bumper um it's never really gonna sit flush unless you maybe molded it or whatever or added like a crazy ton of 3m tape but either way just because uh i had the uh the carbon tron carbon fenders carbon hood i said f it why not get the carbon diffuser it's not real carbon diffuser i believe it's hydro dips but i don't really care <laughs> it looks good to be honest it's not easy to tell it's not real carbon well i guess it is if you're up close but uh from a distance you can see like the weave and whatnot and it looks good but when you look at it in like the trunk and the fender is obviously not the same carbon so uh, i guess that's kind of a giveaway get an up close look of the diffuser i honestly also think that this diffuser kind of sits, suits the uh 2ys bumper more like it really depends what you're going for honestly the diffuser that i had before was kind of like sharp edged and uh more boxy like this one is more, like in that honestly if you're going for a more aggressive look with your 2ys that's the way to go i guess but um in my opinion this doesn't really suit the bump or the uh the two eyes in the rear that's just my opinion i had it for a while and i just kind of just grew tired of it and we don't really have like a crazy amount of like um diffuser options on these cars but or all these good ones but i went with this uh so i'll include the link to where i bought this in this youtube video on this side so yeah i don't plan on selling this car honestly anytime soon um it's been a great daily to me i think i'm at i'm near 250,000 kilometers actually to be honest so i bought the car last year in march when it was 217,500 kilometers and yeah, I'm at about 247, 248,000 kilometers and no plans to sell it anytime soon. I haven't had any issues with the car. Honestly, when I bought the car, I did um, some major services because I bought it from Lexus, but they were selling it uh, as is, like not safety and I don't know what the person previously did or didn't do. So uh, I just did like the things that uh, you want to do. Um, when you when you buy a car like test the coolant uh change the uh, uh transmission fluid um the diff oil obviously oil change and um just everything at that time so uh, and i've been keeping on top of uh maintenance and whatnot like doing regular oil changes and there's not really a whole lot you have to do with these cars to be honest which i like uh not a lot of things go wrong with them but They are great cars. Okay, uh, I'll get on to the, some of the next mods I've done, which is like suspension and wheel related. So, up front, I added a 10 millimeter spacer with the wheels. Uh, I used to have a bigger spacer up front, I used to have a 15. That obviously would not be ideal with the, the carbon fenders because when you turn. Uh, you don't want to like rub the carbon obviously and crack it 
Um, so I changed to a smaller spacer, which was a 10 millimeter. And it's not like as flush, but it's good enough. And here's kind of like a side shot of what it looks like. And in the rear, I added a 30 millimeter spacer. <laughs> I just wanted something wide and it's kind of what I went for with, with this. So like the wheels at the time when I bought them, they weren't that wide. They were 18 by nine and a half plus 38. And at the time I just wanted something safe to run. I just wanted aftermarket wheels that were like safe, um, that would fit, whatever. So I didn't get anything wide, but um, this week I'm getting new wheels in actually. Uh, I've been waiting for those since I went to the next mod. It was a huge shop in, in uh, just north of Toronto. I ordered new wheels from work with them and they recently gave me the call that uh, those wheels arrived. So, or they arrived to, uh, to Canada, I think. I think they arrived to Vancouver. So it's still being shipped from Vancouver to uh, Toronto. I'm just waiting for them to let me know when it arrives to uh, their shop. So that could be by the end of this week, actually. And that will be a huge wheel reveal. So uh, those wheels are gonna be a lot more aggressive. I'm really excited to see how they're gonna fit, if they do. <laughs> which leads me to like the next mod, which is, um, I added, I don't know if you can't really tell or not, but I added the camber arms to the car. I guess you can kind of tell from here. So I bought camber arms from uh, Megan Racing. The front, uh, I have front upper control arms. And in the rear, I have rear lower control arms and the rear upper control arms. I also have uh, two arms to eliminate as much tire wear as possible. Um, I had them installed recently and it took a really long time for my shop to get those installed, actually. I had dropped the car off at 9 a.m. Uh, a couple weeks back on a Friday. And by the end of the day, they still couldn't get the old arms off. Or at least they got, like, some of the arms off. But um, these cars are old and everything was, like, rusted out. And, uh, yeah, like, it, it took a really long time uh, to get the... Uh, the new arms installed and the old arms out but i didn't end up picking up my car until i believe the next day uh they had to come in and uh, install the, the finish installing the arms and then i got an alignment as well so right now the front is negative 5.6 i believe and the rear is 6.3 see if i can zoom in here that's negative 6.3 degrees of camber the 30 millimeter spacer <laughs> uh, yeah i know uh adding camber is not everyone's cup of tea i didn't really think it would be something i'd be into uh like crazy stance and whatnot um but i don't know i just like i just i just really like wide wheels and the wheels i have aren't but uh the new wheels that i'm getting are so that's the reason uh, i had the camber arms installed just to prepare for that uh, and ease up on the wallets so I don't have to do everything at one time and so that when the new wheels come in all I have to do is stop them all still stop them on and adjust the camber and um, do an alignment after that so I'm not going to reveal what the wheels are just yet I uh, should receive them by the end of this week anyways and I'll, I'll make a YouTube video when I do but the new wheels so these wheels currently are 18 by nine and a half plus 38 And the tires are 225, 40, 18. And that goes for the front and the rear. The new wheels I'm getting are, um, I'm actually switching to 19s now. So the fronts are gonna be 19 by nine and a half plus 24. And the rear is gonna be nine and a half, sorry, 19 by 10 and a half plus 16. So it's gonna be really wide in the rear. Um, I don't know how much camber I'm gonna have to add to, to get that wheel to fit, but We'll see when the day comes. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna have to need to add more than eight degrees of camber, but we'll see. You guys will really like the wheels. I know I do. Uh, not a lot of 2IS owners run these wheels. 
on their cars. I will say they are from work. <laughs> uh, I love work wheels. But yeah, these wheels are from work. Uh, they're three piece and yeah, that's kind of like the main giveaway. And they're new wheels, so. Well, they're not new, they're new to me, but they've been around for, for a while, so. Uh, yeah, those are gonna be on the car soon. And I don't know if there's any other mods that I've installed since that time. So I mentioned the front lip, the carbon fenders, carbon hood, uh, carbon diffuser or quote unquote carbon diffuser, <laughs> uh, spacers in the front, spacers in the rear. Uh, I don't know if there's really any other mods that are done in that time. Here's a rear shot of the wheels. Come on this side too. But yeah, I'm really excited for the wheels. I'll come on inside because I know I've done a couple things in there. Alright, so coming on to the interior, as you can see, I have a check engine light. I've had a check engine light for a while, and it's related to the cat I removed, and I believe the code is for running too rich, I want to say. Um, I also had a code for my uh, mass airflow sensor, uh, but I cleaned it, and I haven't had issues with the car in regards to... So, when I had the check engine light for the MAF... Um, I bought a cleaner to like kind of like spray you take out the the sensor and you kind of like clean the inside of it uh i watched the youtube video actually on how to do that just followed those instructions and uh it got rid of the issue that i was having which was um kind of like stuttering and like anytime I like at a red light it did the car didn't really want to go or like and when it did want to go it would just like jerk forward and it would hesitate it's kind of the best way to kind of like explain the issue um i don't really know the specifics as to why the car does that but uh, it's directly related to the MAF sensor. So I bought the, uh, the cleaner from Canadian Tire. Uh, I think it's called CRC cleaner or something like that. Uh, somebody correct me on that. Bought it, cleaned it, and it got rid of the um, jittering issue. So uh, I still have the check engine light, obviously, because of the, um, the what do you call it? Uh, the the cat related issues. So, but besides that, that like, that's my own doing. So I, I I know exactly why I have the check engine light there. And like I said, I haven't had any issues with the car. Um, I'm at two hundred forty seven thousand seven hundred eighty six kilometers at the time of this video. I don't know what that is in miles, but I'm inclined to say that's probably about somewhere between one hundred forty nine thousand miles to. 154,000 miles maybe somewhere in between there someone correct me on that and i'll probably look this up after the, the video but uh that's where i'm at kilometers wise this is a 2009 um is 350 and when i bought the car like i said it was at 217,000 kilometers and um i put on quite a bit of kilometers since the time like that's 14 months worth of kilometers that i've i've put on i put on exactly 30,000 kilometers in 14 months so I bought the car last year, uh, March 2022, and uh, I bought it from a Lexus dealership. I traded in the car that I had at the time. I was driving Lexus CT. I've had ISs before that. I used to have a 2006 IS250, 2006 IS350, and and then I went. I got I got into an accident with the IS350. So I said, screw it. I'll uh, just sell the car as is and. Um, and uh, I, I bought a Lexus CT uh, just to save on gas, save on insurance for a little bit. I was driving that for about six, seven months. And then I got rid of it. And well, I traded in for uh, this car actually. So the dealership gave me something fair for the car and I didn't really have to pay much on top to get this car. It was actually I think, just a little couple hundred uh, just to get this car you know, on the trade. So, and that CT that I had, it had like four or so accidents on it, but it was in really good condition and whatever, but uh, the the accident history and stuff definitely did not help. When I bought the car, I only knew of like one, I think, accident uh, that the, the owner told me that I bought it from, and um, I believe he was the second or third owner, so 
I don't know if you knew about the previous accidents and whatever. I didn't really care. I don't really care now, obviously, but uh, the car drove fine. And uh, I don't know why I'm talking about that car right now in this video. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the car that I had before. And I got back into this car. I had, a, like I said, an 06 350. So uh, kind of just used to this car. I had that car only for two or three months. And I think I only did a muffler delete and tints on that car. And so, yeah. Um, and uh, this is the interior of my car so i get a lot of questions to this day about the head unit like just various questions uh so i'll kind of address some of them now um my car never came with an oem head unit no screen no nothing like that just came with this the old stock um radio the plain one like i said no screen whatever i still got that question i think i mentioned in the previous videos but i still got that question so i don't know if you can install this aftermarket head unit with um the the lex like when you if you have the lexus oem screen i don't know if you can install this head unit knowing that you had that one i knew somebody that i knew someone in the u.s uh that tried doing it i believe his name is jordan he he had the OEM Lexus screen. He got, uh, he took it out and then tried putting this one in, and it was giving him issues. Like, uh, I forget what issues exactly that he was having, but uh, all I know is um, that he wasn't really able to successfully install the, the aftermarket head unit. So maybe this head unit doesn't work with uh, you know, with the uh, with cars that had the OEM screen initially. So it's hard to say. I honestly would not know to be honest. I I only made the video just to kind of explain the head unit itself and. And whatnot i would definitely recommend getting this head unit it's definitely the cleanest most oem looking head unit you can possibly buy aftermarket in my opinion and yeah um oh another mod that i had done not really a huge mod but this interior wrap uh oh i thought that was wet and uh yeah so my friend had wrapped this blue i saw that he was wrapping his car in this color so i'm like why not add this like hints of blue here on the side and on the side as well and he wrapped this in carbon fiber my car is a little dusty inside here so i apologize about that and uh cool seats that hardly work <laughs> but yeah that's the interior interior of this uh car i haven't really done any mods that's that's pretty much that's been done he also did uh the windowsill switches and on the side as well but, uh, oh yeah, I did want to mention about the head units. So um, a, lot, a lot of people did ask me, um, have you had any issues with the head unit since the last time I made a video? So I installed this head unit uh, August, 2022. I made a video on that time reviewing the product um, and whatnot. And there was no issues obviously because I just installed it. There was no issues with the installation. Everything was good. Everything was fine. Apple CarPlay, all that, everything was solid, good. Then I made a video a couple months later, just kind of like, uh, like an update, like a three month update, I believe. And, um, and I don't remember if I mentioned if there was any issues or whatnot. I don't remember I don't, if there was, there wasn't anything major. Um, oh yeah. It was like just minor issues, like wireless car play leg, but that's because like I bought like the base, uh, head unit. Like you can upgrade to a head unit that has a lot more Ram and well, I'm going to open this, these windows cause it's getting hot in here to be honest. <laughs> and uh yeah there's not really any ma major issues with the head unit i've had no issues personally myself uh but i want to say between march and may i didn't have any heat or ac like my ac controller buttons weren't working anytime i'd press any of these buttons uh to increase fan speed or any like anything like that they weren't working for the, the longest time and i wasn't sure why that was i had a feeling it wasn't because um like I, I didn't think it was anything like related to do with the car itself. I had a feeling it had something to do with the head unit uh, or like something electronically related. And uh, my kind of like suspicions were right. Um, mainly cause like when I was driving, sometimes like you'd feel heat coming through like the vents or AC or whatever, but um, you weren't able to like adjust like the temperature or anything like that. Like it was just like nothing would work. And it was kind of frustrating for a little bit, especially on days that were like, super cold in march and super hot in uh may so uh or sorry super warm in may and um and i didn't have ac or heat for for a little bit for those two months so but the reason and I, I i found like i reached out to the manufacturer and he had asked me to like send him a photo 
of the wires and whatnot. And honestly, I had reached out to him back in March and um, he said that, like he said to send him a photo of the wires. Honestly, I didn't really like push to, I, I didn't want to take out the head unit again to like, just kind of like, just to send a photo. Uh, mainly cause like this is seriously hard to, to take out these vents to actually get into the head unit is really difficult to take off. And you can see I broke mine on the side. You can see all four are still there on this like i broke two of them so um i didn't really want to do it for some time because number one i don't drive every day or at least i don't drive anywhere far just because like i work from home and um there's not i didn't really care to like take on my head unit at the time but it started to get warm and i was like yeah i, I need to like get, get this sorted out so i finally got to taking out the head unit i want to say a couple weeks back and um and I was getting ready to send the photo of like the wires and I took a photo of all the wires and I noticed one of them was unplugged and at the, at the back of the head unit. So I plugged it back in and there you go. Like it just, the AC started working again, all the buttons started working. So again, I don't know why uh, the, the, the wire or the plug got disconnected from the head unit. Um, maybe it was because I went over like a bump that was really bad or something. And I remember the day that it did stop working. It was back in, I want to say March. I was going somewhere to wash my car and on the way there, uh, the, the buttons just stopped working, but I just thought maybe it's a glitch. And maybe if I turn off the car, turn it back on, like the thing will restart itself or something like eventually it'll come back on. It didn't. And, um, I, again, I didn't really push to like figure out why the case was that as it is just cause like, and I didn't like I didn't want to make a YouTube video like slamming uh, the manufacturer or anything like that just because like I didn't know what the issue was so I didn't want to like make some like update video on the head unit kind of like saying don't buy it now just because like the AC wasn't working so um, I yeah I took out the head unit and I got it to to work by plugging that thing back in and that's the only update i can really give on the head unit there's been no issues with the head unit i still 100 percent recommend it um audio is amazing everything's good i actually think i need to replace my amp because i don't have audio half the time and these cars are known for having uh amp issues not that there's anything bad with the amp itself it's actually a pretty good amp it's um the the location of the amp is in an area where like water and uh, moisture will get to so um kind of a crappy design by toyota lexus and uh unfortunately we'll have to re probably replace that amp and i'm not going to do that for a little bit uh, i have audio most of the time but uh like there's days like today where i don't have any audio and it kind of sucks so uh just gonna hop back out and just kind of close this video out these cars are really good My thinking is if I sold this car, I don't know what I would get. Like personally, I think I would get like a GS or something like that just cause it's a little bigger, same engine, which I love, or I would get an ISF, I don't know. A GSF would be perfect, but those are hella expensive and I want to buy a house, <laughs> but who knows what happens. But I do plan on keeping this car for a while. Fortunately, fuel economy with this car is not the greatest, but like I said, I don't drive all the time, so it doesn't really matter. Whenever I do drive it, it's like for fun or getting groceries and uh, going to car meets and just for pleasure, I guess you can say. So yeah, I'm um, gonna close this video out. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss any mods. <laughs> and hopefully the next time I make a video, the wheels will be here. Um, like I said, there are gonna be new work wheels. They came from Japan, custom spec them out. Um, they're gonna be crazy. And I ordered tires also, because I need new tires since I'm going to 19s now. I ordered them through the same shop and they are gonna look nutty. So just gonna get like a rear shot here. If you're somebody that's debating on getting one of these cars, absolutely get one.
and yeah so oh um maybe i should have mentioned this earlier but new brakes in the rear slotted and in the front as well Like I said, I bought these fenders new, so when I bought them, they came with uh, one or two small cracks, and I obviously added to that. It's just dusty here, but yeah, it's 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 hard to do both being low and um, having carbon fenders. So some people, when they when they get carbon, they'll uh, they don't really tend to like lower the car like crazy and stuff. Uh, but I had no plans of raising the car up just because I got carbon fenders. <laughs> and my bumper is starting to come off a little bit just because the tab here at the end broke. I'm going to have to do some make DIY stuff and to get that to fit a little bit better. But no rush. There's all summer to do these kind of mods. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.